Hi, I'm Tom Nahumi from Dell EMC. This video will show the steps involved in deploying a fully functional Tenzu Kubernetes Grid cluster via vSphere 7 Update 1 with Kubernetes and Dell EMC Parscale. vSphere 7 Update 1 brings a new possibility to run containers and Tenzu Kubernetes Grid without the need to go via VMware Cloud Foundation. One of the new features that was added in vSphere 7 is the ability to provision Kubernetes persistent volumes on NFS data stores via the updated version of the vSphere Container Storage Interface, the CSI driver. As you can see, my vSphere Kubernetes cluster is connected to a Parscale NFS data store. This data store will be used to create the TKG cluster and the application persistent volumes. The third thing you need to do is building a storage policy in vSphere that can be referenced by the Kubernetes storage class manifest. As you can see, I already created the storage policy called NFS Kubernetes. Under the storage compatibility tab, we can find my Parscale NFS data store. Now I'm navigating to the Kubernetes workload management tab and clicking on my namespace. I'm adding the Dell EMC Parscale storage policy I've just created to my namespace. This will allow me to create Tanzu Kubernetes grid persistent volumes on my Dell EMC Parscale data store. Now I'm logging in to my vSphere Kubernetes using the kubectl command and then switching to the new namespace I've just created. By running the kubectl get sc command, we can see the NFS Kubernetes policy. This appears as a storage class within the namespace. Next, I'm going to deploy a new Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster. The name of the cluster would be Tomer TKG under the Tomer namespace. As you can see, I'm using this storage class in my manifest file of the TKG cluster. This storage class is used for both the control plane and the worker nodes. Now, I'm just going to create it so we can go back to the vSphere UI and see what's actually happening in our namespace. We can see that the new TKG cluster has been created and the control plane has been built out but hasn't been part on yet. I will speed things up a little bit as this process takes about 10 minutes to complete. At this stage, the TKG cluster is up and running. Now let's log in to this cluster I just created by specifying the Tanzu Kubernetes cluster name and my namespace. We can take a look at the nodes to make sure we are in the right context. Here we can see the single control plane and the three worker nodes I've just created. At this stage, let's create a stateful application inside this guest Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster. For the purpose of this demo, I'm deploying an application called Yuga by DB, which consists of three master and three worker nodes. Each has a persistent volume claim, which represents a single VMDK file on the Parscale NFS data store. We can see that within a few seconds, the persistent volumes are being created on the Parscale NFS data stores, and all the pods are up and running. We can access the application UI by navigating to the service address and specifying the application port. If we navigate to the Parscale UI and click on the File System Explorer, we can see the TKG export, which is actually our NFS data store. In this directory, we can find the TKG master and worker nodes file, but if we go to the FCD directory, we can see our database persistent volume files. Persistent storage is presented through the VMware CSI driver called CNS. It uses first-class disks instead of standard disks. FCDs are just virtual disks, but in the API, they are first-class citizens. They can be created and exist independently of a virtual machine, which makes sense for something like a container. FCDs can be created and resized just like a virtual disk, but without a VM to own it. This is exactly what Kubernetes Persistent Volume Claim is. 
We can view all the information relevant to our persistent volumes consuming v storage in one place. Under the Container Volumes view, we can see very useful information about the persistent volumes managed by the CNS driver. We can see the persistent volume name. We see that it is on the Parscale NFS data store, which is compliant with the storage policy. We can also see the health status and the capacity. If we click on the details icon, we can see more information about the Kubernetes objects, such as the different labels, the name of the pod, and the namespace. Under the basics view, there is more information such as the type of the volume, the storage policy, and the volume ID. Dell EMC Parscale is a key component of this solution, as it offers full flexibility and granularity that may be required by your containerized applications. I really hope you find this demo useful, and thank you very much for watching.